guys. This will be a nice little review of what we did yesterday, as well as uh, when we got to some of them yesterday, I told you, well, one's better than the other of those resonance structures. And I said, it's not always the most obvious thing. Um, it's like, oh, well, this one looks the best. It's the most symmetrical. It doesn't always work out that way. It has to do with something else called formal charges. Now, this will sound confusing, okay? Watch. All right, obviously you have it written there, but this is formal charge equals the number of valence electrons in an atom minus the number of lone electrons and half the number of bond electrons divided by the square root of pi over the irrational number. I'm kidding. But it really does sound kind of confusing, right? It's a little confusing there. You got the valence electrons minus what the heck, lone electrons plus half the bond electrons. As I do them, it really isn't that hard. What you're trying to find out is everybody wants to have a um, formal charge of zero. In other words, you want to get it so he's used all the electrons, all the electrons in his valence shell have been used, and he doesn't have too many around there or too few. All right? And so that's you could tell that by doing this little calculation above each one. Now, I'm going to redo two guys you've already seen. In the other class, they had a double yesterday. I didn't do this. We had just done carbon dioxide. We had just done HCM. And so I didn't, or what, not HCM, this is our one, uh, CNO. Uh, I, uh, I had just done those, so I just kind of wrote them back up here and did it from there. You guys, it'll be a nice little review to see how to do these again. Needed, available, shared, all that stuff. Okay, so let's do that. A little bit of a review. Uh, nine, six, eight, and seven. If that's you guys, you might want to wait. I'm only going to be talking for about 15 minutes, and you know the picture guy's going to be there all day. So you can just go down a little bit later after I'm done with this, if that is any of you guys. All right. um, oh, yeah. By the way, it will happen that you can't get a zero formal charge sometimes, no matter what you do, on any of the resonance structures. So in that case, the, guy, the negative formal charges should always be on the most electronegative element. Okay? And we'll talk about that. It's going to happen in a minute. All right, so let's look at the three you guys have for examples there, right here. And I'm going to skip around. I'm going to do this guy and this guy first because they illustrate something very important. And then we'll finish up with you guys trying this one on your own. Okay? Let's try this. All right, first we have CO2. You've seen CO2 before. I'll do needed, available, shared over to the side here. And needed, available, and shared. And you kind of know what's going to happen here, right? Needed is going to be three times eight is. 24. Available is going to be 6, and 6 is 12, and 4 is, make sure I don't screw this up, 16. <laughs> and that means I need 8. Okay. And by the way, it's very easy when I try to do this quickly to do the math wrong. If you catch me doing it wrong, make sure you let me know. All right, so that means there are four bonds. And here are the three possibilities we could have. Now, I want you to make sure you spread these out. All right, we're going to, have to spread these out across your paper sideways so I can write the formal charges above them and below them. I can have this, where I have double bonds there, right? That was the first one, the most obvious one, the one that most of us said. And when I draw my electron dots, I kind of want to put them, because I know about the Vesper theory, I know these electron uh, pairs are, are negative and are repelling each other. I'm going to put them like that around there, all right? I'm not going to just put them uh, where, I, in Chem 1, I just told you to put them on the top, bottom, left, or right, right? Okay, I could also have this. Okay, Now, in that case, I've got a triple bond here and a single bond there. My electrons are not going to be what you think. They're like, I'm, That's not true. It's not going to be what they were over here, I should say. This guy has, you have to try to fill up the octet rule, right? He's got two, four, six. He needs two more. He'll put them there. This guy only has two, so he has four, six, eight, like that, right? Again, this is just a reminder of what we did yesterday. And I could also have had this. to do that. There we go. Uh, in which case it would look like this and that. Got it? All right. Now, I have to do the formal charges for these to see which one's best. You all said you think this one's going to be best, and you're right. But let me see if that basically works out for us, if that, why that works out to be the best. Okay, let's take a look. How do I do formal charges? The valence elect number of valence electrons in an atom. Now, I'm going to ask this question. I know I'm going to get the wrong answer. You're going to be thinking about it wrong, so I want you to ask it first. How many valence electrons are in oxygen? It's not what you're going to think. Normally, when I ask you about oxygen, I say, what does oxygen want to do? And you would say he wants to gain two. He has a negative two, whatever. 
It's not what I'm asking here. I'm asking how many valence electrons are in oxygen. What's the answer to that question? Six. He's in group six. He has six valence electrons, okay? So I just simply take six minus the combination of the number of lone electrons that are around oxygen as well as the half of the bonded electrons. Let's see what that is for this guy. One, two, three, four lone electrons. Four. Five, six. Half the number. There's actually two for each of those pairs, right? So one, two, three, four, five, six. Got it? So six minus six happens to equal zero. So this guy's zero for his um, formal charge. I'm going to do, so I don't have a whole lot of room. I'm going to do carbons underneath, okay? And then I'll do the other guy above. Carbons underneath here. What's the valence, number of valence electrons for carbon? Four. How many things am I subtracting from carbon? Bonds count as half, right? Even though there's two in each one, so it'll be one, two, three, four, right? So four minus four is zero. So he's got a, a formal charge of zero as well. Wow, that's nice. Because remember, things want to have a zero formal charge. And what about this last oxygen over here? Same thing. Six minus one, two, three, four, five, six. Zero. He's got a zero formal charge as well. Everybody's happy. Everybody got what he wanted out of this deal, the best it could possibly have happened. Now, this is another possible resonance structure for this guy. However, problem, he will not be 0, 0, and 0. And let's watch and see what happens with this guy. Let's do oxygen first, and I'll start down below because I have more room down below here. Oxygen is going to be 6 minus... One, two, three, four, five. Uh oh, that gives me a positive one. Okay, for the uh, for the formal charge on oxygen, he's not happy with that. Carbon, by the way, I'm not going to do because can you see that the carbon in this one, this one, and this one is always going to be the same, right? What's it going to be every time? Zero. Although my stupid pen's not working very well today, it's going to be that's a zero up there. The formal charge on carbon is zero. This guy over here, what about him? Six minus, oh boy, this is going to be way off. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. He's got a lot. That's a negative one. Okay, so I got a plus one and I got a minus one for formal charges on these guys. Not as happy, right? Can anybody use a little bit of common sense and see what's going to happen for this guy over here so I don't have to do them? It's going to be exactly the same, only opposite, right? The guy that had the triple bonded O is going to be a plus 1. The guy that had the single bonded O is going to be a minus 1. And, of course, oxygen is still going to be 0. So, of those guys, the one who is the most stable would be this one. That does not mean that these other ones don't happen or don't exist. But the combination of them, remember, these kind of form... What we call, say is that electrons are delocalized over the, you know, the entire molecule. Um, these guys would have some properties of these guys, but not as much as it would have this. Be very close to being this one because that's the most stable of the resonance structures. All right. Now let's take a look at the guy down here, and you will not see the same thing, even though they look the same. Let's draw this guy over here. Need it available and share it again. I'm going to do up here, uh, although you shouldn't. You should do it below where you have more room. I'm going to do up here so you can see it better. So I do needed, available, and shared for the guy below. I'm skipping this one because that's the one you're going to do on your own in a minute. All right. Needed, available, and shared for this guy. I've got three atoms, all of which want a real octet, so that's going to be 24. I've got four for him. I've got five for him. That's nine. Nine and six is 15. But I don't write 15, do I? Because he's also got a negative one charge. So it's 15 plus one more electron. That's where that negative one comes from. It's 16. What's the difference between 24 and 16? Everybody knows that's 8, which means I will need four bonds. Got it? Now, that same basic logic happened up here. And I'm going to do the same basic thing. I'm going to put carbon in the middle. I'm going to put a double bonded N here, a double bonded O here, and I'll fill in the dots later, but let's just do the skeletal structures first, okay? 
Here I'll have carbon with a triple bonded N and a single bonded O. And here I'll have carbon with a single bonded N and a triple bonded O. You all see where that's coming from. I have to have a total of four bonds. I could do it for three possible ways. I could have two double bonds, a triple and a single that way, a triple and a single that way. They are not going to be what you think. You might think to yourself, well, this guy looks the best, kind of like this guy looked the best. He's going to be the correct answer. No. It has to do with formal charges. And actually, you start getting used to seeing nitrogen with triple bonds anyway. You'll see why later. But anyway, um, let's just finish up the electrons here. How many electrons would I need around nitrogen for this guy? Two more here and two more there, right? What would I need around uh, oxygen over here? Right? Over here? Agreed? Right? Is everybody okay with all that? I, I haven't been ch double checking. Uh oh, well, my fault. This guy should be just a single one over there, right? You can erase that if you like. I guess I should erase it just so. Okay. Now, just to make sure you all what well, you should check with all this stuff, although we don't have to do it for uh, everyone. We've done these before yesterday. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. That's how many I should have every place. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16. Okay? And that's what should always happen. You should never have more than the available number of electrons. Oops, it's still on that. It should be on that. Oh, that's better. All right, let's do the formal charges for these guys. Nitrogen. What am I subtract? What's the first number I'm going to write down here? 5, right? Because he has 5 valence electrons. I'm going to subtract... How many from that? One, two, three, four, five, six. I subtract a six from that. That gives me a negative one charge for this guy. All right. Can anybody see what carbon is probably going to be again? Yeah, carbon is going to be zero, so I'm going to avoid doing him again because for the same exact reason he was zero up here. All right, four minus four is going to be zero. In every single one of these cases, that's the case. All right, but what about oxygen over here? He's got... 6, I'll do them down below. 6 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6. Hey, that's nice. Gives me a 0 charge. So I have negative 1, a 0, and a 0. Not like last time up here where I had a 0, 0, 0. That was the best one. This one may not be the best. It's not that bad, but it may not be the best. All right. Let's take a look at this guy. Nitrogen. He's got 5 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. That's nice. Gives me a zero, so it's a zero up here for a formal charge for nitrogen. Carbon we know is going to be zero. And this oxygen, let's see what happens with him. Oxygen is going to be six minus two, four, six, seven. Gives me a negative one. Well, very similar to the previous one. Only the negative one formal charge is on the nitrogen. It's on the oxygen this time. It was on the nitrogen. All right. Uh, and let's look at this guy over here. It's last one. You're watching him? There's a dot there. We have nitrogen with 5 minus 2, 4, 6, 7. Ooh, that's not good. What does that give me? Negative 2. Ooh, that's not right. Probably the least stable one we're going to figure right just from that. This guy's going to be 0. And here we got 6 minus 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. He's not even happy. He's got a plus 1. Okay? Well, you know, all things being equal, I would like to have zero for my formal charge on everybody, but like I said, that doesn't always happen. It can't happen in this case. All right? So who is my most stable one? We say, well, there's a tie. Is there a tie between this one and this one? No, there's not. What did I say happens when there's a tie? Form negative formal charge should be on the most electronegative atom. Who's, the most who's more electronegative? Here it's on oxygen. Here it's on nitrogen. Who's more electronegative? Oxygen is further up and to the right in the periodic table. So this, put a big star by, is your most stable one. That's your most stable one. Okay? All right. Now, you can see how I use the entire board to be able to do that because I, I knew I wouldn't have a whole lot of room. You guys should have had a big space in the middle here to be able to do your last one. And I'll do that one for you, but I want you to try it on your own. Try doing COCl2 on your own and tell me the formal charges and who would be the best of those guys. I'm going to erase these.
Board, please report to the auditorium. You get that? Or are you getting that? Okay, make sure you got all three of them. They don't have to be in that order. They didn't have to be drawn with the O below. The O could have been to the side of the CLs below, but they should look something like that, right? Those are your three possibilities. Work out the formal charges. I'm not going to show the work for these. I'm going to put the formal charges above them and see if you guys agree that that's what they are. Get zero for all of those? Absolutely. They come out perfect. They, they're nice. That's obviously your best guy right here. How about over here? Well, not so much. Um, and the biggest problem, and you'll start to notice that things don't look right when this happens anyway. I'll show you that in a second. But let's, I guess, let's just finish these guys off here. Just give me a zero here. There's a zero there. Um, what's he going to be? Six or four? What is it? Negative one here? Negative one here and a positive one there. Okay. And then vice versa. It'll be a positive one here. A negative one still down here. Zero and zero. Okay. All right, good. Um so I, I put a star already by this guy. It's gonna be your best of your resident structures. That's nice. But look at it. one more thing. I honestly, just because I've done these for so long and I see compounds all the time and I know what we're going with organic, you start to get used to seeing certain things. You're not surprised when you see a triple bond coming off of the nitrogen. Okay? You're not surprised when you see a double bond most of the time around an oxygen. Okay? All right? You start to see that. The reason behind it are the formal charges and the fact that oxygen's got, you know, two electrons. He's trying to gain nitrogen three. All right. There's a lot of reasons behind this. But it starts to seem really weird if you see a chlorine or any of the halogens with a double or a triple bond. That would be really strange. We wouldn't expect that. Why? Because chlorine only has one electron he's trying to gain. And, and you give him a double bond there, it's going to be kind of weird, awkward. So even without doing the formal charges, things start to look right or look wrong. This looks wrong to me because I see a double bond coming off of a halogen. Okay? This looks right to me because I see a double bond going up to an oxygen. It just looks right. And you're going to notice that when we do more and more organic compounds and structures, you're going to see that. All right? So let me erase this all, and that's good. Now, this last part, I got to tell you, I very unlikely you're going to see, I hope you're not going to see, Expanded on tests on the AP exam. It did say it. You're, there are certain things. Um, 
uh, it says you still are responsible for being able to, to uh, it's, it's confusing. There's an exclusion statement, stuff that they've cut out, and it's not entirely cut out, but I think they're de-emphasizing it a little bit. But just quickly, let's just do one or two real fast in this. I'm never going to ask this again. So the only these, just these two quick examples are going to do. You won't see it on my test, all right? You, uh, and you won't see it. I mean, hopefully you won't see it on the AP. We'll see. Third period elements or lower may exceed an octet, okay? And so if there are extra electrons, when you go to do your thing, you just put them on the central atom. That's basically all you have to know. It has to be a third period element or below. Before that, it won't do it. All right, and there are certain guys that do it more often than others. Uh, but let's just do the two examples I want to do here. PF5 and uh, what's there? What's CLF3. And you can see, again, you see with PF5 or CLF3, you probably have an idea that, boy, things aren't going to work out nice for us. If I tried to join a CL on an F, you know, last year, you know, if you were going to try to join one of them, you would probably have written it like CL. And F, he wants to, you know, he wants to uh, gain one, and he wants to gain one. So they would share, and that's probably what CLF would look like. So you put two more Fs on there, and what the heck? I mean, somebody's going to have more than he should have, and that's what happens. But let's follow the rules and do needed available shares real quickly for these. Hopefully, never see them again. But you should know, it says they're not completely excluded. So my needed. Five, six, six total out of six times uh, eight is what? 48. Four, where each of them has seven. Seven times five is what? Seven times five is 35. Plus, uh, what is it, group five? Five, 40, right? 40. Okay, so you have a total of eight shared, which means four bonds. Let's see if I can figure this out. Well, who clearly has to be in the center? P has to be in the center, right? Here's the problem you're going to have. How many F's have to be around P? Five. I don't really care where you put them. They have to be bound. They have to be bound. Hold on a second. Stupid thing right there. Um, I can't get rid of it. That's all right. So I, the bare minimum number of bonds I have to put... Really? I didn't do that. Why is it doing that? Hey, what? <laughs> didn't go away. Okay, whatever. P, F, 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 F. It doesn't really matter where. Where you put them. You say, well, I can only have four bonds. Remember my shared over here said four. One, two, three, four. Uh-oh. <laughs> I got to put another bond on there. I have no choice. I know that they're bound. By the way, I was looking up the explanation for this, and it's pretty funny. You can look it up for yourself. Um, basically, their explanation for expanding lock tests is this. Well, we know what happens, so we know there are exceptions to the rules, but you know nobody really knows why. All right? And... Uh, it's, it's like the octet rule, it doesn't mean you can avoid it all the time, but you can avoid it in these cases because they exist. That's their logic. Their logic is you can violate the octet rule because we know it exists. They have no real reason for it. It's best I can come up with. So here's the problem. Let's start putting, you know, getting an octet for everybody, right? Okay. What happened here? Do, did, is there, do I need any extra electrons? You always have to double check at this point. Do I need any extra electrons? How many total were available, did it say? 40. 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14. Perfect. That's what he actually looks like. But the weird part is our need of available shared did not come out right. It said we should be sharing 8 electrons, which is 4 bonds. We actually couldn't do that. We actually had to add another one on there. And the next one's going to be worse. Because the next one, when we go to add them up at the end, they don't come out right. Let's do this last one here. CLF3. Again, four guys. What is that? Neat. Oh, no, no. Okay. No, no, no. <laughs> okay. Need it is 32, right? 
Available is four times twenty-eight. I can't do that. Uh, shared is four. Two bonds. Is that right? Well, that ain't right because watch what happens. I put my CL in the middle, and I put my F and my F and my F there. I got three bonds already, right? I was only supposed to have two. Let's try giving everybody an octet. By the way, it's CL, not C. Let's try giving everybody an octet. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty, twenty-two, twenty-four. I need to get twenty-eight in there. I've got twenty-four right now. Chlorine would only want how many more? Two to get an octet, but you've got to put four on there because I can't create this for electrons. Yeah, that's right. And the good reason for that is because we said so. That's all I can find. I couldn't find any other better reason than the fact that we violate the rule because we know they exist. Why they violate the rule? Why all of a sudden we can expand octets? Well, I mean, I did read some other stuff on it. It's true. I guess there's because they have D sub levels and all this other stuff, most of them. I don't know. Um, but hopefully you won't see expanded octets much in the. You should be able to recognize one, one that would not fit. You can see, wouldn't that not fit CL and F, like I said, they would normally want. And then it's PF5. The fact there's five things around one guy. Wouldn't that tell you you have to have an expanded octet? If I put five things, I'm automatically sharing how many electrons? Two, four, six, eight, ten. So there are ten electrons around that central atom, whatever he happens to be. So you should be able to recognize uh, whether it's going to have an expanded octet, I don't think they're going to ask you to do any more than that. I don't think they're going to ask you to do it. But if you do, you put any extra electrons after the need of the available shared on the center atom. That's where they can fit. All right, good enough. I'm done. Um,